All right, I'm so excited to introduce you to our um, our next uh, member of our team. Lene Girard has been the Houston Methodist Librarian um, for a few decades now, um, and I'm delighted to have her uh, present to us um, about some resources available to us to help us cope and persevere through this very difficult time from public libraries. So hi, Lene, how are you this morning? Hey Jess, how are you? Oh, I'm delightful. Um, tell us about it. Tell me about these library resources available. So, of course, a librarian, what do I want to talk about? Libraries. Um, <laughs> it's not, my topic today is called, um, it's not just leisure reading, and we're addressing some of the opportunities for you to explore the many public library systems in the greater Houston area. So depending on where you live, you can ask, access both like a city library and a county library system. So for the majority of people near the medical center, that would be Houston Public Library and also the Harris County Public Library, which there's a nice branch in the West U area. So for me, that would be the city of Pearland and Brazoria County. So luckily for most of us, we have access to more than one system. And all that's really required is to get a library card from each system and then create that personal username and password so that you can access the system remotely. So I've listed several popular system, uh, popular library systems in the area that are close to the Med Center, but if you have issues and can't find the right one, I've also in the last, um, the last slide, I think I've included my email address. So if anybody has questions, they're welcome to um, text me or email me directly. So the public library system in this country was founded by none other than Benjamin Franklin. That's 1731. That's a history lesson in itself. The public library has grown and is a primary source of information for a huge percentage of the population. Libraries in this country are free. It's your tax dollars at work. So why let this underutilized resource go undiscovered? It really has so much to offer, and it's not just leisure reading. The public library is an incredible resource of history, biography, DIY, you know, all those projects you promised to get around to. Popular literature, yes, they do have Christian Grey and Harry Potter, but they also have health and beauty, science and math, even those um, science fair project books that your kids are always looking for when it's time for science fair. Uh, language books, dictionaries, CDs, databases, and even magazines. So let me tell you how easy it is. Each library system uses a unique app, but the most prevalent of all of them is called OverDrive. A couple use a simplified version of OverDrive. It's called Libby, and it's readily available at the App Store and free, of course, and very easy to download. So once you have that library card number, you give yourself a PIN number and you can access that account through your local system. Once you're online, you have access to the world. Electronic books or eBooks, it's just like Audible, but it's free. Audiobooks, if you like somebody to read you a story, perfect. Magazines like Elle, Popular Mechanics, National Geographic, uh, Reader's Digest, Architectural Digest, all these can be read cover to cover as if you had them in your hands. Comic books, manga, anime, oh, great for the kids, right? Uh, reading a variety of newspapers worldwide, music, entertainment, including older TV episodes. Did I say music? Yes, there's music. <laughs> On top of everything else, there's training opportunities. Those are listed um, in an online resource that contains a blog as well, and it's an app called Linda. So Ooh. it's lynda.com. Lene, did you want me to go to the next slide? Oh, yeah, that would be great. Oh, there it is. There it is. So oh, that's right. That's where you're listing Libby. Yes, Libby and OverDrive. So OverDrive is probably the one that most libraries will use, but I think you can interchangeably use Libby. It's just a little bit simpler and it's designed to use for a Kindle. So on top of everything else, these training opportunities that are listed are online through lynda.com and they include everything from like photography, um, database management, programming. They have a huge number of interesting topics. 
So if you want to explore some things that maybe you've always been interested in, but just never took the time to, to investigate, that's perfect for you at this time. We seem to have a lot of time on our hands, right? So beyond all these books and magazines that are available, there's a number of databases too. I think those are on the next slide, perfect. So a number of databases that have um, and cover pretty much any aspect of an interest area that you have. If you're a leisure reader out there, of course they're the best sellers. And if they're not even readily available, you can put them on hold and then they will notify you when they come in and there you go, ready to go. If you're that armchair researcher, then there's a number of databases in every imaginable topic. Genealogists, try Ancestry.com or Family Search. Both are very robust um, genealogy databases. Magazine Junkie, I think I used to be that. There's a multiple databases with current and topical magazines, everything from cooking, Vogue, Money, Scientific American, they're all there. Homeschoolers, well, this is the buzz of the day, right? In this world of chaos from COVID-19, many of you are called into service as a home educator. And for you, the public library has a multitude of resources that I hope you'll consider and take advantage of, including that teacher's reference center, as well as Tumble Books, which are um, literature for children, and Tumble Math. It's all kinds of word problems and math quizzes, really excellent tools for the kids for home studies. So beyond that, for adults and students of all ages, that list of databases I included, your public library probably subscribes to most of those. And for those people who might be interested in finance, all you financial gurus, there's Value Line and Morningstar, Book Review, if you wanna read about books before you read them, Flipster, it's for the magazine lovers, Federal Register, Patent Registry, Consumer Reports. I found myself looking up Consumer Reports recently because I'm looking for a new lawnmower. Um, Home Improvement Reference Center, where you can bone up on that honeydew list. Um, newspapers, The Chronicle, Newspaper Index, all kinds of fun things. Students writing those papers, there's Academic Search Complete. I can't tell you the value of the public library. It's really there for you. And it's a resource that goes underutilized many times. It's free thanks to our forefather, Ben Franklin, and, the, er, and his early congressional leadership, which recognized the um, importance of libraries. So thanks for your time, and I hope you'll consider checking out some of these fabulous resources. I'm currently listening to a da Alex Delaware mystery while reading a biography on Roberta Gately, a nurse humanitarian, as well as my dream interest of retirement and a uh, how-to for baby goats. So the sky's really the limit, and I hope you'll look at your public library for all current and future interests. If you need help in these stressful times, you can email me, and I've included my email address there. That's, Thanks for having me. That's fantastic, Lene. There are so many resources I didn't know about. I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us today. It was my pleasure.